Okay, let's be honest. Building a deck in a trading card game is way harder than it seems. You should be able to put in cards that you like, cards that you see working well against you, but when you do, for some reason it crashes and burns. It's because it's just not that simple. There are some key things that you're missing, and I'm gonna take you through all of those in how to build your deck 101 right now. There are three stages to building a good deck in parallel. Planning, building, and testing. We're gonna go through each of those, starting off with the good old planning. When planning your deck, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to identify is when do you want to win the game? There are usually three options in most trading card games, and Parallel's no different. First being aggro or burn decks, which you wanna do as much damage to your opponent's face as quickly as possible, ignoring the board state and just doing straight up damage. There's also mid-range or tempo decks, which wanna play really valuable cards and keep board presence and try and win in the uh, five to 10 turn range around mid game, like it says. And then there's control decks. These are decks that want to nullify everything your opponent's doing, take it into later turns and play big guys, big threats, and eventually win the game in the long run once your opponent runs out of steam. Once you figure out your deck's speed, you're gonna wanna pick a parallel and a paragon to match. There are five parallels in the game each having three paragons that all change how your deck plays. Now, this can get pretty gritty, and so we're gonna keep it high level here. If you're playing an aggro deck, you're more likely to pick Cathari or Marcolians. If you're mid-range or tempo, you're gonna wanna pick either Augencore or Earthen. And if you're playing a more control-oriented game, Shroud's gonna be your best bet. And this is where the fun starts. Literally just pick something that sparks your interest. Whether it's a Paragon, you just think they look cool, or it's a card, you read the text, you wonder if you could build a deck out of it, it doesn't matter. The goal here is to have fun, and anything that you pick, you can build a good deck around. If the goal is just to get a combo off and you're building a deck around that, then once you've got that combo off consistently and you've built the deck, then mission accomplished. First card, Reclamator. Second card, Squad Trader, let's go. Third card, Recon, let's go. Give me the combo, baby. Warlord, give me the combo. Kef. The deck that you build does not need to be top tier competitive in order to be successful. This is all about building decks and having a good time playing the game. Quick disclaimer, if this is your very first trading card game, you haven't played Magic or Hearthstone before, then make sure to finish all of your Rookie Q games. Not only will this give you more experience, you get cards from all the packs and the apparitions that you open, but you're gonna understand more about what each parallel wants to do, which decks you have the most fun playing, and also what your opponent is gonna be trying to do against you. The more knowledge, the better, especially when it comes to deck building. Also, these starter decks will give you a great base if you wanna copy or duplicate a new deck over, and then start tweaking. This is a great template to add and remove cards from. No need to start from scratch if you already have a great starter deck to work from. At this point, you should have a crystal clear idea of what your deck is trying to do, both in speed and what you're trying to accomplish. You need this because this is going to be the metric when we build our deck and when we test it, everything is gonna revolve around this one thing that your deck is trying to do. So let's get into building. Here's the golden rule. The more you stray away from this, the more games you will lose. I guarantee it. Every single card in your deck needs to focus on your win condition. It's very easy to get bogged down in putting cool cards in, in having a bad matchup and trying to account for that. I'd say about 20% of your deck should be focused on what your opponent wants to do and shutting that down, but 80% needs to be focused precisely on exactly what your deck wants to do. Adopting this tip will change the way that you view trading card games and build decks in parallel entirely. And if it's been helpful for you and you've enjoyed the video so far, if you could just snipe the like button with a Marcolian battle rifle and also hit the subscribe button because we are pumping out videos just like this every single week We've got live streams, 
and much more. All sorts of good stuff around here. It would mean the world to us. We really appreciate it. Back to it. Now you're probably wondering, how many of each card do I put in my deck? Well, the short answer is, you want to be mostly adding three stacks into your deck. You pick a card and you put all three copies that you're allowed. This makes sure that you're playing consistently. It also makes sure when you're building that you're focusing on only the most important cards to your deck and to your win condition. This is the rule of thumb, especially if you're new, you're gonna want to add as many three ofs as possible. Two ofs are a bit more specific. These are cards that you want to see at least once per game, but you don't want to be constantly drawing and aren't necessarily core to your game. These are cards like board clears, really big units, or relics that do a specific thing. One ofs are very, very specific. These are either legendaries, which you can only even add one of in your deck, or very specific hate cards like relic removal or something to counter a very specific matchup. This is not something that newbies should really be thinking about too much. Legendaries are fine, but as a rule of thumb, if you're new to deck building, try to avoid putting one of a card in your deck. Keep in mind that you want to be killing your babies. <laughs> your favorite card may not be servicing your win condition. Cut it. You can always build another deck around that card. If it's not servicing this specific deck, then you need to get rid of it. There's no shortage of decks that you can build. And so if you need to build a bunch of different ones that are all laser focused, go for it. Perfect. You may hear people talk about either a mana curve or an energy curve. Well, if you go to the deck builder in the top right, you'll see exactly what they're talking about. This is a visual indicator of both the cost and the quantity of cards in your deck. The reason it's called a curve is because you want it to look exactly like a bell curve. In the middle, it's exponentially higher, and on the ends, it tails out. This means that when you're playing your deck, you won't be flooded in the late game with very low cost cards that are ineffectual. And in the early game, you won't have a handful of eight energy big bad boys that you won't be able to play and you're gonna die before you get there. This is all about consistency and it's about showing you exactly what your deck is and where its power spikes. If your deck is curved properly, then you're most likely to pull cards that are playable and valuable for you at the time. There's obviously exceptions to this. If you're playing a control deck, your curve's gonna be a little bit further to the right. If you're playing an aggro deck, it may be spiking around two or three cost cards. This is all okay, but as a rule of thumb, now you know what you're looking at here. To the left of your curve shows all your different card types. Now this can change depending on what your win condition is, but as a rule of thumb, starting out, you're gonna want to have two units for every other one relic, upgrade, or effect. This makes sure that you have units to play on the board. You can control the board a little bit, and obviously these are the things that are mostly gonna be doing damage to your opponent. So you wanna make sure you have plenty of them. At this point, you should have 40 cards, a full deck ready to play, but you need to do one last thing. You need to name it and check and see that your card back is appropriately set for the deck that you're playing. There is nothing worse than building a new deck, being proud, ready to test it, hopping in, and then that gross gray default card back is showing to you and everyone in the world that you have no style. We need to have a little self-respect here. No more new deck default card back. I'm done with it and it's embarrassing, frankly. We need to be flexing on haters and there is nothing more intimidating to your opponent than a steezed out deck they can't see that you named it, but you know that you named it, and they will cower in their boots. I guarantee it. You're gonna win games with this. Next step is actually playtesting your deck. This is where you hone it, refine it, make it into the gem, the diamond that it is. You're going to need to do something for me. Promise that you play three games with your new deck before making any changes. What's gonna happen, and I know this from experience, is that you're gonna queue up, you're gonna have a bad matchup your first game, and you're gonna change 10 to 15 cards in it. It's not gonna do anything for you, it could have just been a bad matchup. You need multiple games in order to test and make sure that you are making the right changes to this deck. There are three things to keep in mind as you continue to hone in your deck. The first of which is, do I have cards to play on turns one, two, and three? 
The early game sets up the tempo for how the rest of your game will go, and even if you're a control deck, you want to have valuable cards to play on these turns. If it's becoming a problem for you and you realize you're pressing end turn without playing anything on those turns, then go and check your energy curve. There's likely to be a problem in how this is distributed that's making it so that you don't have enough early game drops. The second thing to consider is what you wish you were drawing throughout the game. This could either be cards in your deck, like defenders or removal or card draw, or it could be cards that your opponent is giving you trouble with and you wish you had an answer in your deck. Deck building is a zero sum game. And so once these first three games are done and as you continue to refine your deck, this is where you need to make cuts to, in order to add these answers in to achieve a perfect balance. The third consideration here is what cards am I consistently putting in the bank for energy? The best parallel decks that I've played, every turn is a struggle because I don't know what to bank. My hand is full of useful cards and the biggest decision becomes which one of these do I throw away for more energy in another card? If you're consistently putting a card or two in your bank then it's probably better served as a different card that could be useful in most situations with those three things in your mind and three games under your belt it's time to start tweaking your deck now there's only so much advice i can give here because each deck is unique but the one thing i can say is tweak slowly you want to add or remove one maybe two cards at the most per time and then run another three games it's very easy to play a play a deck and think oh the whole thing's wrong i'm going to switch out half of the deck but you really won't fully know what the problem is unless you take it slow and now you've made it through the entire deck building 101 course we went through strategy deck building, tweaking, everything you need to know to be an absolute deck building god. And I gotta say, I'm proud of you. You made it. You're now an official game seller parallel deck builder extraordinaire Meister Burger. That's crazy. I bet your mom's proud of you too. If you got through this entire video and you're still wondering which parallel you should play, what their key differences are, cards, vibes, all that good stuff, we have an entire video right here. Make sure you check it out. And if this video was helpful for you, we would appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe. We keep pumping out content every single week. And that's pretty much all we got for you. Go out there and build some decks. Peace.